Good afternoon and thank you for watching THV 11 News at Noon. I'm Michael Lahren in for Amanda Yeager. It is a big day at the state capitol where Arkansas lawmakers have gathered for a special session to discuss a possible amendment to the state's new mask mandate ban. THV 11's Jay Jackson live at the capitol with more on the bill that was filed and why the governor wants to give schools more flexibility. Jay. Michael, it's now filed as House Bill 1003 to amend the original act signed by the government, Act 1002. Now, the House and the Senate met this morning and agreed to send it over to committee af this afternoon at 1. Now, it didn't take long for the outcome of the bill filing. Yesterday, both the House and Senate agreed with Governor Hutchinson declaring a public health emergency for the state in a committee of the whole meeting yesterday. The new House bill, if voted on and passed, will give school districts the flexibility to decide their own mask mandates. Also yesterday in a meeting, Governor Hutchinson said the decision comes with concerns for 12 year olds and younger not being able to be vaccinated and wanting to keep them safe for the school year. He wanted to make sure that he gave parents and districts that choice again for children 12 and under who are ineligible for the vaccine. We'll keep you updated on the outcome of committee on THV 11 this afternoon at 5 and 6 reporting inside the Capitol. Jay Jackson THV 11 News. Jay, thank you. As the debate continues over school mask mandates, we're still hearing from people who argue masks are not effective when it comes to pre preventing COVID-19. But is that true? We are re-verifying this with the latest data on exactly what we know about how masks work. Here's Amanda Yeager. Our sources, the CDC, specifically this science brief from May of 2021, and Dr. Katie Passaretti with Atrium Health, a medical provider in the Carolinas. In the brief, the CDC says the goal of a mask is to reduce the spread of respiratory droplets. The CDC found multiple layers of a mask with high thread counts work better than single layers with lower thread counts. In some cases, the right mask filters nearly 50% of fine particles less than one micron. That's very small. Several studies have shown if a COVID carrier who doesn't wear a mask is around another maskless person, that person has a high risk of catching respiratory droplets that carry COVID. If at least one person is wearing a mask, there's a medium risk of transmission. But if both people are wearing masks, you're at the lowest risk, and it's your best bet to not catch COVID-filled droplets. Dr. Passaretti says the fitting of a mask is crucial, too. And respiratory spray with a mask, and that mask that has the closer fitting um, does a better job of protecting you, protecting those around you from your kind of respiratory secretions and whatnot. So sure, you can feel your breath through your mask, but the idea is to block respiratory droplets, and masks do accomplish that. Which leads us to the main question, do masks help prevent the spread of COVID-19? The CDC says after multiple studies around the world, they found cloth masks not only effectively block most large droplets, but also block a person exhaling fine droplets and particles smaller than 10 microns. Again, very small. So we can verify, yes, masks do work in preventing the spread of COVID-19. Got a question related to COVID-19 or vaccines? Email THV11's Verify team or send us a text to 501-376-1111. Now, weather from the First Arkansas Bank and Trust Weather Garden. All right, Nathan is standing by in the garden now. Nathan, almost felt like fall this morning. Not quite, but close. <laughs> Michael, it is a gorgeous August afternoon here in Arkansas. You want to get outside and enjoy this weather because you know it can't last. But we start off this morning with the coolest temperatures that we have seen since July 5th. We woke up with numbers into the 60s in many locations. Check it out here. 67 was the low at the Little Rock Airport. It was 65 in Stuttgart, 63, the cooler spot in Clinton, and 64 in Camden. Out there right now, we've got plenty of sun. Few clouds off into northwest Arkansas. Temperatures very comfortable with this low humidity. Temperatures are into the low to mid 80s across the state. Radar on a clean sweep, and I think it will stay dry out there for all the state through the rest of the afternoon. Here's your planner today. Plenty of sun. Temperatures warming up into the mid to upper 80s. Other places across the state expecting a high of 89 for you folks in Arkadelphia, 86 in Russville, and you'll top out around 87 in Searcy. The nice weather's going to stick around for the next couple days, but the heat and humidity will be making a comeback. I'll have more on that in our next chance of rain coming up.
Nathan, thanks. New at noon, CHI St. Vincent Hot Springs is temporarily postponing elective surgeries and procedures because of the recent surge in COVID cases and hospitalizations. The hospital says this will allow them to focus available hospital capacity and resources on the growing number of COVID patients who require hospitalization and other critical care needs in the area. It's also suspending Saturday clinic hours at clinic locations in Hot Springs Village to allow those health care workers to focus on other areas of critical need. You can learn more about the change right now on THV11.com. That decision comes as we continue to see significant jumps in our daily cases and hospital numbers. Let's take a look at those. More than 2,000 new cases of the virus were reported yesterday. That jump brought our total active cases to just below 20,000. And as our cases climb, unfortunately, our hospitalizations do as well. As of the latest update, 1,250 people are fighting the virus from the hospital in Arkansas. That is 30 more than Monday's total. And another 16 Arkansans have died from complications of the virus, bringing our death toll to 6,215. But there is some good news to share. Demand for the vaccine is increasing. More than 30,000 doses were administered between Monday and Tuesday. That is significantly higher than the numbers we've been seeing in recent weeks. As of yesterday afternoon, more than a million Arkansans have been fully vaccinated for COVID-19. Another 317,000 are still waiting on their second shot. And if you'd like to learn more about the vaccine or where to get one, simply text the word vaccine to 501-376-1111. We'll send a link with those resources straight to your phone. New York City will soon start requiring proof of vaccination for indoor dining, some performances and to go to the gym. But many businesses across the country have already taken this step on their own. Michelle Medina reports. Customers who want to buy a shot at the Permanent Records Roadhouse Bar in Los Angeles need proof they've received the shot. The decision was a difficult one to make. But, Owner Lance uh, Barisi asks customers to show evidence of a vaccination card or a negative test. For the protection of our staff and our patrons, we thought this was the best option. Effervescence in New Orleans has a similar requirement for indoor diners. Unvaccinated customers are welcome to sit outside. There's a few people who commented on Instagram, you know, negatively, but most people are applauding us. With COVID-19 cases rising, there's a growing number of bars and restaurants adopting vaccine policies. Hundreds of establishments in San Francisco now ask for proof of vaccine or negative test. Many owners fear rising infections could lead to another round of shutdowns. The majority of people barely made it through the first uh, very long and very strict um, shutdown and reopening process. The policies have received negative comments. I think that we we're getting maybe one or two complaints from people who live in San Francisco per day, and then we're getting probably 10 to 15 complaints from people who don't live in California. Um, they don't live anywhere near here. But many establishments with requirements say they are actually seeing a boost in business. I want to support establishments that kind of are looking out for the best interests of their patrons and their staff. Many owners believe only welcoming COVID free customers will give them a better shot at staying open. Nichelle Medina, CBS News, San Diego. And that is exactly why Whitewater Tavern in Little Rock is now asking its customers to be fully vaccinated or present proof of a recent negative COVID-19 test before entering. After closing down in March of 2020, they are getting back open right now. Co-owner Travis Hill explains how important it was to get musicians and their workers back on the job. Getting them back to work and getting musicians back on stage and doing it as safely as possible. So, you know, requiring proof of vaccination, while it's not 100% foolproof, uh, that or a negative test, we think is the most safe way we can reopen. The tavern officially reopens on Friday. You will be asked to show your vaccine card or a negative test from the past 48 hours. Now to a THV 11 update. Family members of Hunter Britton and George Floyd traveled to our nation's capital to meet with U.S. Senators. The families joined by attorney Ben Crump used the meeting to push for police reform. 17 year old Hunter Britton was shot and killed by a Lone Oak County Sheriff's deputy during a traffic stop back in June. Britton's family says he was holding a jug of antifreeze when he was shot. Sergeant Michael Davis was fired afterward for not activating his body cam until after the shooting. 
Crump, who is representing the Britton family, says the time is now to pass the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. It's about all our children. Yes, all our children need this bill to be passed. We don't want to lose any more children unnecessarily and unjustifiably. After the meeting, Crump said at least one senator is aiming to get the bill to the Senate floor by next month. Meantime, Hunter Britton's grandmother, Rebecca Payne, says she doesn't want her grandson to die in vain. This needs to be passed because there's no need in any more children or anyone being killed by a police officer for no reason. My grandson was 17. He had his whole life ahead of him, and now he's gone. I just want, we're here to get change. We want change for America. We want change for the people. Arkansas State Police investigated and turned the case over to prosecutors who will now decide whether the deputy should be charged. Dash R View 11 looking off to the east and northeast over the river bridge. Still a haze in the sky because of that western wildfire smoke. I'll have more on that and talk about we're making weather history here in Little Rock today coming up. Plus a human concept that's gone to the dogs. The cutest free library you'll probably ever see when THP 11 News at Noon returns.